What's up, y'all? This is Rom coming back at you with yet another car video. The reality of Mr. Goodbar and why women are looking for him. Yeah, the reality of Mr. Goodbar, Mr. Goodbar. You know what? Anybody who's got my books, Nice Guys and Players or in uh, Sexual Chemistry, knows I talk about the sexual, sexual hierarchy. You know, in general, select and non-select, but then I even break that down even further. Now, in the select group, you have the masked men. And, you know, they'll have, like, some money and status and everything. But even beyond that, and I'm going to say beyond that, are the Mr. Good Bars. Those are the ones that women go crazy over. Those are the ones who don't have to spend money on women. Let me say that again. They don't have to spend money. Because women want them for sex. I'm going to get into that further uh, later on. Why are they looking for them? And, you know, that term Mr. Good Boy, you know, that that's, that's old. That's not something, that's no recent shit. They were talking about that in the 70s because there was a book and movie looking for Mr. Good Boy. You know, and in that book and movie, you know, this woman, it's based on a real story, but this woman, she'd be cruising nightclubs looking for one night stands. But what's a one night stand? Sex. And I was thinking about that. I said, I got to discuss that because I still get some guys who say, you have to have money. You have to have money. Well, here's the thing. One, you got to have a whole lot of money. And then even then, you still got to have some looks. You still, you got to, you have to look good. You got to have some status. You can't just have money. Plenty of guys got money and ain't getting that. You got to have, like, the looks, money, and status thing. I always said it works. I just said sex appeal is better. That's all I've ever seen. I said that in my very, very first video. I said, yeah, you'll get something. And even then, it's still limited. But Mr. Good Bar, he gets everything. Indeed, I talk about the Good Bar Mystique in, in a on-demand video. I'll put a link for it, the Good Bar Mystique. And I had a couple other uh, videos uh Focusing on Mr. Goodbar on demand. I'll, I'll put them all in the description box. But yeah, that's the term because women want them sexually. But a lot of guys don't seem to understand that. They think just money. They think just money. But see, here's the thing. I don't see how they don't understand. You got some guys out here. They ain't spending no money on women. And they getting some. For those who be talking about Pookie and Ray Ray, these like street dudes and stuff, they got money? Shoot. Or you got, uh, shoot, even with the money thing, you got some women getting with some guys and shoot, they sponsoring those guys. Kept men? Kept men? Like the woman making all the money, they moving the woman in. I mean, uh, the man in. Because the women, shoot, they shoot, they got enough money. They shoot, they get them a, a boy toy or some dude. And shoot, I've seen that. I told you where I lived last time, this apartment, young lady above me. And she wasn't even really making money like that. Well, she was living in the same building I was. So she wasn't making money like that. Had that uh, five foot eight muscular Dominican dude. And annoying me being on the treadmill while she at work. But as soon as I I be in the bed, be trying to sleep, I knew exactly why he was there. All I do when I heard the springs upstairs, I was like, "Yeah, go ahead, make your money, dude." <laughs> and shoot, I know some dudes like that now. The women sponsoring now, you know. And you know, and let me just say, make it clear, I ain't saying I condone it. Even though I've been there before. But I don't condone it because every man should make money for himself. But this is just the reality. Shoot. This is just the reality. You just got a percentage of guys. Some dudes may call them Chad or Tyrone, whatever. At least they have a general understanding. Whatever the case, whatever term you want to use. I'll use Mr. Good Bar. In fact, uh, a woman even said it. Good Bar means good D. Boom. But the women, they just dealing with them for that. And yeah, they can be broke. Like somebody commented uh, the other day. Like, nah, they ain't gonna mess with a dude if he broke. 
if he ain't a good boy, yeah, he better have some money. He gonna have to do some. Hey, he gonna have to do some sponsorship. But if he a good boy, which means the woman looking at him for the D, boom, that's all he. he that's all he had to give. They looking for him for the sex. And I'm gonna get more into that in a bit, even deeper, because a lot of guys don't get that part. But that's just the reality. Because okay, if it's all about you know, if you got to have all that money and stuff, okay, how, how are these teachers getting with these students? These students don't got no money. These students are like these male students they, they getting with. Because there's always a story of a woman hooking up with them, even getting pregnant by these guys. These guys don't got no damn money. These guys sleeping in the same bunk bed at home. Shoot. Most of these young guys can do is pay attention. Or oh, ain't got a stiff one for these, for these women. Or they kept, or in fact, uh, even in marriage, because some people say, well, that's just sex. What about for a relationship? Well, I just saw a stat. And y'all can look this up yourselves. Uh, you know, Google is your friend. Look it up about women making, being married and making the most money. Now, the stat I saw was like, they said, what? I think in, what? It was from 20, 2021, about 30% of marriages have the woman making more money. Something like that. The number is 30%. 30% of uh, married women making more money than their husband. And indeed, even if their husband's working, they still make it more. And then you got a lot of guys who kept guys. I remember uh, when I was working at this retail uh, place, one of the managers, she, she was the one making all the money. Her husband wasn't even working. Wasn't even trying to work. But he had to be giving her something. <laughs> he had to be giving her something. And then let's be real out here. When these women cheating, they ain't cheating with a guy just because he got more money or something. They cheating. They, when women cheat, I don't care if give a shit what they say. They, they put all that other stuff. Oh, it's an emotional thing. If they allow, if they got a husband or a boyfriend and they allow another man to penetrate them, it's about sex. And you got a lot of side pieces. Um, that's all they doing. A lot of maintenance men. Even if they ain't even if they ain't in a relationship, let's be real. A lot of women out here got a maintenance man. And that's strictly for sex. They ain't going out. They might never be seen in public. In fact, the woman might tell the guy, if you see me out in public, act like you don't know me. But that's all because of sex. Now, look. In general, I label those guys Mr. Good Bar. And like I said, check out the links for the on-demand videos that I've talked about it. And in fact, I got some older when I was first on here. I talked about I used that term a whole lot. Just do a search on uh, Mr. Good Bar in my archives. And I mean, it's the same principle. Like some people say 20% or some people say Alpha, some people say Chad, whatever. It's the same thing. The guys that they women are throwing it at. But see, a lot of guys don't understand it. In fact, I remember, because people know about my book, Sexual Chemistry, where I go even deeper into Mr. Goodbar. I even got a whole chapter, right? That book was actually inspired because before that, because my big thing, I, I like seminars. I, I like doing live shit. That's why I say whatever I say here or on the video, I, I've said it in front of people and dealt with pushback right away. Now check it out. I was at this thing. It was a group of uh, it was a group of young black professionals in DC. It's around 2001. I think yeah, it was 2001 at this thing. Now these these are all money guys in here. These were all money guys and professional women, professionals. So there were no broke dudes in there. Now first of all, it struck me that most of these professional men had trouble with the women. In fact, there was a point, I'm sitting there, right? I'm sitting there. I'm looking at all these women in there, and these guys are gravitating towards uh, my wife. Because <laughs> when she was in there, you know, at first we were like, I'd say, she was just sitting there, and I said, yeah, I'm going to see you going to come for so I can clown them. They were all gravitating towards her. <laughs> I'm like, look at all these other women in here, <laughs> but y'all yeah, gravitate towards her, right? So... Anyway, we uh, they did some scenarios and uh, talking about the other guys listed, the masked men, the uh, gamesmen, the nice guy, 
everything, right? So we were doing like, they were doing some, um, you know, some acting and stuff, you know, skits and everything based on it. And, you know, it was a discussion and it was just back and forth. I mean, this was just straight up argument. It was still annoying that the men were on one side and the women were on the other side. Cause I, and this is back in like 2001. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? What the fuck is this shit? In fact, there was a singles party. There was a singles party at the, I was uh, one of the organizers for around that time. And the dudes weren't talking to the women. I was like, ain't this some shit? I was like, this some crazy ass stuff. But getting back to that main seminar, yeah, because all the other stuff, that, that starts a whole other conversation. But getting back to, and the women, oh, she had some fine, some baddies in both times. But I was like, damn, it's a good thing I had a ring on my finger. But here's the thing, though. They were arguing about all the stuff, but then when they got to Mr. Goodbye, they did a skit. I had to correct them. I was like, nah, that's not it. That's not it. <laughs> okay. And then they were just, I had their total attention when I was talking about Mr. Goodbye. They, I'm like, how can y'all, I say most of them couldn't get it. It was like a couple good bars in there and they were just nodding their heads so silently. <laughs> in fact, with that same group, I did another, I did another seminar. And I mentioned this one where I had a woman arguing with me that, you know, women don't be using some guy just for sex or dealing with a guy just for sex. And we were specifically talking about Mr. Goodbar. And she was like, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. I mean, arguing, almost ready to come to blows type of arguing. And then what happened, when we got outside, just me, her, and a couple of her friends knew she was bullshit. And she said, damn right, she got a muscular young boy just for sex. That's Mr. Goodball. It ain't about the money or whatever. See, understand some women, on the real, women really just settle for money. Like, the only time you really going, it's really going to make a difference like your shit gotta be your shit gotta be um, six figures and even then double back home one day <laughs> double back home one day I ain't did this in a while hey Joe Roughneck here it comes yeah you think it's about money you got all that money you think you got that woman double back home you be going in there see that all of a sudden you hear all those screams in your bedroom Shoes, you be like Mr. Big <laughs> in the R. Kelly uh, Contagious video. I'm gonna put that in. This. I put that in a few times. That's gonna be the situation. He gonna be doing your woman, and you gonna look, he gonna look back at you. My bad. Is you man? All right, man. Let me get about 15 more in, right? <laughs> yeah, check out that Contagious video about that my bad situation. Yeah, how that money working then? One was Mr. Goodbar, the other one was the Masked Man. So, and one time, somebody on one of my private sites said, Masked Man shouldn't even be considered select, to be honest. So, and he had a very, very, very good point. But, focusing on just Mr. Goodbar, nah, women, there's just going to be a percentage of men, all they had to do is show up. I can relate to that. That's the only way I know the game. I ain't had money like that. I had to do that. I ain't had money like that. I told you there was a period I had some money. None of the women were getting with me. Only women I was getting with were the ones I didn't spend money on. You know? And I know for, I, I know for a fact a couple of them, like, uh, in fact, when I, at that time I had the money, was taking them out and all that shit, there was a couple times I, I, I played Uber. I talked about that publicly. I was the Uber before Uber was in existence. On a date, taking them someplace, not back to their place or where I picked them up at, and be some dude right there and be like, it'd be like, uh, oh, he just my cousin. And yeah, I don't have a problem admitting to that. That's why I know. That's why I know. I say, hold up. That's some bullshit. But then I got to be the guy, I got to be the cousin. <laughs> I got to be the cousin. And, like, that time when I really got into body game and really got into the shadow world especially, I ain't had no money. I was living at, I was living at home with my grandmother. I ain't had no money, no steady job. That was a period, like, I always joke about having a thousand jobs. This was a period, you know, it wasn't working like that then. 
the women just invite me over and shit. Like, literally, that's all I had to do is go over to their place. And it was for one thing. And they made it clear. They weren't trying to be, like, in a relationship or anything. But that's that whole good part thing. That's that whole good part thing. And it was really, it stayed that way, really. It's actually still that way to this day. Because when I'm, uh, if I deal with any women, unless they know me from online, they don't know what I do. They don't know what I do for a living. And I drive a modest car. I drive a modest car. I don't be walking around acting like I got money and shit. Boy, they be friendly. They don't know where I live, what I do for a living, anything. But that's that good bar energy. In fact, within the last 10 years, when I was in a more modest apartment, women would come in. She, my front door was like a, a turnstile. It was literally like a turnstile. And all I had, I didn't have any money. And I'd be having sex with them on an the air mattress. I had to change the air mattress a lot, though. Those things ain't that good. I'm be honest for long term. <laughs> But, you know, if a woman want to be with you, if a woman really wants to be with you, you don't need to spend money on it. Even in a long-term relationship. Seriously, I know, I, I'm going to be real. I know some guys now, they really, the women are a uh, money maker. The woman is the money maker. So if a woman want to be with you, and see, that's all I know. Seriously. That's all I know. Now, some guys, they can't relate to that, but they just tell me, okay, you ain't never been Mr. Goodball. Ain't no shame in it, but don't put it down. Don't think your way is the only way. You know? Apparently, there's something. Like I said, everybody ain't good bar. And in fact, people say 20% of Honestly, good bars are probably 15% of the population, maybe less. But they still exist. The guys are out there. They're still out there. You know? But why are women going for them? Like I said, sex. But see, here's what a lot of guys don't get. They don't understand how women want that sex. In my book of players' eyes, I call it that drug. I call it that drug. The, uh, the drug called pleasure. In fact, anybody who's followed me a very, very, very long time know that instead of a jazz opening, I used to use the song Pusher Man. I used to use this song, Pusher Man. And it was a young lady I had met, too. And she did it first as a poem, but, but then uh, her and this other poet, this other poet, started a group. Started a singing group. So she, she turned it into a song. And I'm going to put a link for it. I actually presented that, like, the whole song. I actually put a link. I'll put a link for it, Pusher Man. Listen to that song closely. She talking about she 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 going crazy over that drug. And it a player's eyes. I say, you know, women want that drug called pleasure. Because see, women are looking for him. They're looking for that man who's gonna bring that passion. See, a lot of guys don't understand. They try to like rationalize why women have sex or think, oh, women don't like sex as much. Yeah, they do. A lot of guys ain't giving it to them. You give them that passion, that pleasure, they get addicted. You know, and honestly, even though it might look even in situations where the woman's making more money, honestly, it's a form of pimping. Think about something: the dude sitting home all day while the woman going out working. And a lot of those, not all those. I mean, in all fairness, it's not all the situations, but a whole lot of them. The man really got control. He controlling her with his dick. He is literally controlling. He don't have to work because even if he got her, he probably got another woman and stuff. Shoot. Sure. Or you got some you got some guys, shoot, they got a whole crew of women. They don't even need they don't even need to have their own spot. I knew this guy like that. He just had different women to go dick down. You got a lot of guys doing that shit. Sure. That's a street hustle, really. You got some guys they don't they don't got shit to their own name, but they got a bunch of women they dicking down. Stay over here, get a meal, all of that, get some clothes from this one, get a little bit of money. Can drive, hey, can drive uh, one woman's car while she at work. Yeah. Shit, that's that's the thing. 
And they just giving them that passion. See, one of the things is, a lot of guys got to understand. If y'all understand that one thing, they looking for pleasure. Yeah, they'll have sex with men, you know. They'll have, they'll have the pity sex. They'll have the transactional sex. Relationship sex. All of that. Something to do sex. But then, ultimately, they want that pleasure. They want to feel good. They want to holler. They want their toes to curl. They want to be singing in tongues. They want to make contact with the great pumpkin. I mean, they just want, hey, they just, they just want it. Mr. Good Bar delivers the goods. He's a good bar. Seriously. He's like uh, a mentor, uh, Master Yao, and Yamache Morris. He would say they want Mr. Good Bar because he's like rich chocolate. They want to indulge. And he actually has control over the relationship because they, they'll they stay with him until he decides he wants to go. Like I said, there's definitely some exceptions where the woman has total control. But even then, not really total. Like I said, they, they step out too. You know? Because usually guys like that, women fighting over them. And the guys don't got, a, <laughs> they might not have a penny to their name. In fact, I'm going to share that video. There was this guy. He was a homeless guy sleeping with multiple women. Homeless. I'm going to see if I can find that video and put that in, in the description box. There's a whole lot of stuff. But I want guys to understand it. Now, what is it that they, like I said, what they're doing? They're giving a the passion. Now, that's the one thing. If you look at what I teach, I'm teaching you how to, like... Uh, bring out the good bar in yourself if you can if you can or at least just understand that's what women looking for you know yeah they like all that other stuff in a relationship but shoot they want that pleasure they want to tap those thighs you know they need that drug they want to be romantically intoxicated you know you bring that uh Shoot, even Tariq Nasheed said that in his book, uh, The Art of Mackin. They want that euphoria. Even Tariq Nasheed pointed that out, but nobody really talks about that. Seriously, that's what they want. They want that drug called pleasure. They want that euphoria. They want that romantic intoxication. You know? They want to just feel good. They want that feel good. Whatever term you want to use, Mr. Goodbar delivers it. Now, they'll deal with a masked man, but that's usually, you know what? That's more practical. I'm just be real. That's more practical. And even, like I say, he seriously, he got to keep his shit up. And he still got to, I'm going to tell you what. The masked man, even if he got all the money and status, he still got to bring, he still, he still got to bring her that drug. It's not the money and status doing it. He's, he got to have, he got to have just a little bit. Like, like Mr. Goodbar got the pure drug. He got the pure uncut, you know. The masked man got that watered down thing. He got the watered down thing. It's decent, you know. One of the things with the uh, the gamesmen might got just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. Like, you know, like she just got no other options. And nice guys just don't have it, period. Nice guys are just not turning the women on sexually. That's it. Now, I know some guys get mad and be thinking all this other shit, but you got, we got to deal with reality. You know, not the fantasy or like, oh, she should like you because you're a good guy and all that. You know, or you'll do this and that, or, you know, you're good with kids in the neighborhood. They can respect that, but it don't get them wet. It don't get them wet. You know, it ain't getting them wet. Their, their vaginas ain't tingling. That's why they look for Mr. Goodbar. And if you talk, and in fact, you talk to a lot of women. I've talked to a lot of women. They'll meet some guy who will have all the stuff, all the other stuff. They'll meet a guy. They'll say, I'll ask him. They'll say, he handsome or I got some money. In fact, this one woman I was messing with, I told this story before. I remember she was just a friends with benefits back in the day. I ain't, I ain't spent one penny on her. We met at a club. Anybody drink anything? We were dancing. Got a phone number. She invited me over. Boom. We were stroking from that moment. I ain't spent one penny. I messed with her for four years. I ain't spent one penny. 
but I wasn't trying to lock her down. So she said she had met this guy and she said he had money. He was handsome, dressing out. He had all that stuff. But she said she didn't feel a spark. Now, it sounds crazy to a man, but a spark is she just ain't turned on. I was turning her on. She was, she, hey, she was going to pop every single time we had sex. Well, not every single time. She said about the first six times she ain't go pop. She told me. So I said, oh, okay. I got I, I, I to I, I, I give her the grind. After that, boom. Couldn't get rid of him. Couldn't get rid of him. So I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing. You gotta, you gotta. That's what the women are looking for. And a lot of guys gotta understand that they want that pleasure. A lot of guys don't get it. They thinking all this other shit. Well, but hell, that's why you got some women. They making plenty of money. Oh, they'll get, they'll get that young guy. Hell, that's how you'll get some women. They marry. And they'll start messing with that young guy who cutting the grass. Be like, hey, you want some water? Right now, now, down. You working real hard. Hey, that shirt is real wet. Why don't you take it off? Now, now, now. Be like some bad porn or something. She be like, oops, the panties. Then it's like, nah, 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 they want it. And it, I mean, seriously, that's the good boy. Now, good boys don't necessarily make the great husbands or something, but a lot of times they don't. But sometimes they do for some women. Like I said, you got a lot of women. They sponsor, straight up sponsor. Making more money than a man. All he had to do is just give it to him. Moving them in. And I've known some women. They moving some guy in here and say, he got a job. No. <laughs> I know what he for. He drive the car and everything. Yeah, shoot. She tapping her thighs. <laughs> but no, nah, it's a reality, though. I mean, some dudes, and I know some dudes that hear that, and they be like, oh, something wrong with them. No, ain't nothing wrong with them. One of, look, one of the things out here, man, people got to start dealing with the reality. They got to start seriously. Just deal with the reality. Fuck all that fantasy shit. Because if you want to keep dealing with it, how's that working for you? You know? Fuck all the fantasy shit. In fact, somebody had said something about uh, that fantasy thing. I did someone. They mentioned Peter Davidson and uh, Ariana Grande. Look, Peter Davidson and Mr. Good about all these women. <laughs> you know, some people say it was the stars, it's this and that. You give them a hot beef injection. <laughs> shit. <laughs> He giving these women a hot beef injection. So it's like, cause even that, cause even um, in fact, somebody had commented and he said, yeah, they kind of they were kind of talking about that kind of inspired this video too. They mentioned some uh, musicians uh, that he considered ugly, right? But they turning on the women. Sure, that's why you got some dudes, yeah, got the ugly, sexy thing going, cause if they turning on the women. Because the face is actually the least thing that'll turn on a woman sexual. But that dude, hey, that dude got in there. He wearing some gray sweatpants or something. <laughs> oh, man. They, they ain't even looking up there. In fact, this dude who followed me on IG and stuff, man, he did some videos on YouTube, man. He did some Mel Exotic dancing now, man. The women be talking about his joint. <laughs> be in there with gray sweatpants. Women be it was a serious thirst comments. <laughs> but that's all. It ain't nothing wrong. Look, let me be clear on it. Ain't nothing wrong with the women. Look, if you understand a woman's nature, their whole nature is pleasure. Their whole nature. Like a woman, you could touch her on her bicep. And if she's open up, she'll scream out in ecstasy. She'll scream out. She can open up that much. In fact, that's part of the secret of making a woman come without uh, touching her. Because if you turned on, you got to open up. All you have to do is just dip your head to her, look at her. She'd be like, huh. I actually made a woman do that one time. A couple of them, they just looked me in the eyes. They were like, huh. <laughs> hey, look, 
It's all about that sexual energy and everything. But women looking for it. Ain't no shame, man. What guys got to do is say, okay, if you know they looking for that, then work to become a sexy man. Work on your body. That's the main, because that's the main thing in it. Still fix yourself up. You know, I say your face ain't as important, but still fix it up. And then uh, work on your attitude towards sex. If you got any sexual hangups, deal with that shit. Deal with that shit. Just, and just understand, hey, it's not right or wrong. Because, look, let's just be real. Look, I'm just going to say this. Y'all, most of y'all motherfuckers here because your mother was horny for your father. Now, I'm quite sure some of y'all might be here otherwise. But even then, and even some of y'all whose father really ain't your father, she was horny for that guy she cheated with. So I'm I'm just being real. Let's just be real with that shit. Let's just be real with that shit. Cause think about it. I'll shout out Master Yao again, cause we just did a, a webinar recently. He said two of their main he said four things, but two of the main things was what they do. Have babies. We can't have babies. That's a thing. And then receive pleasure and give pleasure. That's sex. You know, ain't nothing wrong with it. If you understand that about, if you understand that simple thing about women, you will always have one. You won't be able to get rid of them because they can pick out some guy who's looking at them and got a vibe that he will provide pleasure. They look at a guy. A lot of guys out here, you know, got issues with women. It shows in their body language and shit. But if you look like, hey, in fact, uh, when I did that loafer video, I talked about shining a light on a woman. How you even look at a woman, they can tell some stuff. So that's the thing. Oh, man. You know, some women don't be, need to be wearing spandex. But I guarantee some, some scuzzy do they hit it. But seriously, man, if you understand that about women, women's sexual nature, and see, the good bars do. The good bars do. You never you never fail to have company. You never fail. It's just a matter of which women you want to deal with. And like I said, for the most part, good bars control. They deal with women on their terms. So, but that's just the reality. That's just the reality. Don't get mad. Just accept it. Once you, I'm going to tell you something about me. I've seen some fucked up shit in life. One thing about me, I learned how to just accept it, you know, and shout out Master Teacher BGS. That's the real black pill. You just accept the reality. You ain't bitching about it. The real black pill is you just, the shit is, and you just accept it. You know, you don't get mad. You just accept it. So that's, that's it. It's just the reality. Figure out how you can take advantage of it, twist it to just suit your personal needs. All right. And I know some people have a problem with it or something. Stay off the channel. Seriously, I don't have time. I'm, I'm a, too many dudes are walking around out here frustrated, getting hurt, shoot, killing themselves. No, I'm going to tell you the real deal. And when I say body game, body game can help get you there. You might not be there fully, but it gets you there enough to get some attention from women. So, anyway, that's all I have for now. Y'all have a good weekend, y'all know. Oh, and real quick, I'm going to say this again. If y'all check out my videos uh, on Saturday, on Sovereign Saturday, or my inspirational stuff on Sunday, don't ask me any game questions. I can't stand that shit. Because, you know, life bigger. As much as I love sex and love talking about it, life bigger than them. even bigger than that. You still got to live the rest of your life. And that's what my weekend videos are about, just getting your shit together. Even with the money thing, I always say you make money for yourself, you know, so you can live well. So that's, you know, that mindset is what I focus more on Saturdays and just pure inspirational on Sundays. So anyway, that's all I got, y'all. Get back with y'all. Peace and blessings.